testing is already too late of a stage to identify the spread of the disease because the process goes like this. You first develop symptoms. Some people would not call immediately for a coronavirus test and they would let these symptoms develop further. And during those days, if you're not isolated, you were wandering around and you were spreading the virus. Having a tool that can tell us ahead of time and can predict ahead of time where the virus will spread can be really critical because we can direct testing there, we can identify patients ahead of time and limit down the spread of the disease. So there's a few tools and analyses from the area of machine learning and artificial intelligence, which we are um, experts in, that we have applied in this case, and we're able uh, to provide these types of insights. So for that, we developed a very short survey that is anonymous, and we ask about symptoms associated with the coronavirus disease, such as shortness of breath and loss of taste and smell and fever and cough and so on. And we ask a few questions that help us to put these symptoms in context, like whether you're a smoker or not, because if you're a smoker, then we're less surprised that you cough. And from that, we are able to build a map of the entire state of Israel, where we can see at the level of cities and even at the level of neighborhoods, what fraction of people are currently experiencing symptoms related to coronavirus infection. Using these symptom maps, we actually can identify these changes in symptoms and the rise long before the individuals even call to get tested. And, 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 and that gives us a um, several days at least in advance to identify the situation and to act upon it and uh, by that uh, limit down the spread of the disease. This tool has already proven itself in the ability to do that and if the public continues to fill out these surveys now that we exit and go back to our daily routine by continuing to follow these symptoms we can track what is going on and we can raise a flag if and when we see ahead of time that there is a rise. And that can be very critical because if we can identify that rise ahead of time, we will be able to take surgical localized operations in those areas and in those areas perhaps do some lockdown but save the lockdown from the rest of the country. It can help us save lives, keep the economy open, and this of course all of this could be implemented in multiple countries. I think the first followers of our approach were the UK. The survey now is very strong in the US. It's being implemented in Luxembourg, Germany, Italy, Spain, and we have a website with all the different countries who have uh, joined us and, and more will probably join uh, as time goes on. Then when the second wave will come, which most likely it will come at some degree, uh, we may be able to be ready for it with this type of tool that will help us to predict ahead of time regions of the spread of the virus.